In this video, we'll quickly look at Marfan syndrome. So Marfan syndrome is a genetic disorder which is autosomal dominant in nature. So it affects the body's connective tissues. So if it is autosomal dominant, that means there is 50% chance that the next generation would be affected is if one of the parent is affected. So inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant and the FBN1 gene is mutated in this case. This codes for a protein known as fibrillin. Fibrillin is an important component of the connective tissue. So the FBN gene mutation on chromosome 15 leads to these problems. Now fibrillin protein basically is a part of microfibrils. So here we can see how fibrillin crosslinks all the microfibrils. And microfibrils are super important because they give uh, our tissues elasticity. So this is how uh, the overall chromosome configuration would look like. Let's say there is one defective copy and that is enough to create the outcome of the disease. So that is why it is autosomal dominant. Even if there is a normal copy, still it would override the activity. So this particular situation lead to a reduced production of fibrillin 1 or almost no production of fibrillin 1. So that leads to several problems because there are fewer functional microfibrils that reduces the elasticity of many tissues which lead to several physiological problems that we would talk about right now. Also, these fibrillin proteins help in sequestering TGF-beta uh, molecules. So basically, they orchestrate and they regulate the TGF signaling pathway. So in absence of fib functional fibrillin 1, there is a problem with the TGF-beta signaling pathway. Now, many of these uh, microfibrils are present in different different tissues. They could be only uh, present uh, uh, like this or they could also be present in combination with elastin, giving some extra flexibility and stretchability. So only microfibrils are found in tendons, in uh, ciliary zonules of the eye. Also these microfibrils with the elastins are found in arteries, skin, lungs, etc. So obviously we can understand when fibrillin 1 is mutated, all these aspects, all these biological aspects where fibrillin play a role would be affected. And let's try to appreciate that. So this is the clinical presentation. There are distinct skeletal abnormalities the legs and the hands are extremely thin and uh, slender. So basically they have a tall stretcher, long extremities known as arachnodactyly, means like uh, legs or hands resembling a leg of a spider. Then the chest wall is abnormally protruded out or, in, or indented inside. It is known as a pectus excavatum if it is indented and pectus craniatum if it is bulging outside. There could be scoliosis, that means sideway curvature of the spine. There could be kyphosis, that means excessive forward rounding of the upper back. And also there could be hypermotility of the joints. So already we can understand there are so many abnormalities with respect to the skeletal system. Because obviously these fibrillin proteins were really important in the in context of the cartilaginous tissues, right? And that leads to these abnormalities. There could be ocular abnormalities like ectopia lentis, that means dislocation of the lens. So here you can see the lens has fallen off from its position because fibrillin was really important in, in, the, uh, in the zonules, right? Also there could be myopia, that means nearsightedness. There could be also detachment of the retina itself might lead to blindness. Cardiovascular compli complications are plenty. There could be mitral valve prolapse. There could be aor aortic root dilation leading to basically regurgitation in the aorta. So there are different stages of uh, aortic di root dilation and some of them are uh, depicted here. There could be aortic dissection which could be life threatening if untreated. Pulmonary complications are plenty. So there could be spontaneous pneumothorax, that means collapsing of the lungs. 
because the connective tissues are affected here right so that is why there are different level of uh, consequences of that so the clinical criteria involves looking at the features which are quite distinctly visible there is something known as gent criteria which includes major involvement of two systems either skeletal cardiovascular ocular along with basically the genetic confirmation so an example could be aortic root dilation z score two or greater than uh, two and along with that there is ectopia lentis that means basically displacement of the lens so any combination of these two can lead to a diagnosis according to the Gantz criteria. But in order to investigate many symptoms, imaging based diagnoses are prescribed. For example, a echocardiogram can be used to assess the aortic root dilation or the mitral valve prolapse, etc. MRI or CT scan could be extremely useful to understand the aortic dissection and even other aortic uh, uh, root dilation, etc. Basically, slit lamp examination could help to understand any abnormalities with the lens. So thereby, um, there are a plethora of tests by which can be performed. So when it comes to clinical management, cardiovascular management can be done using beta blockers, which would reduce the aortic wall stress. ARBs like Lostran can be used to slow aortic dilation. There could be regular uh, there should be regular monitoring of the heart using um, echocardiograph. There could be, uh, there should be, uh, I mean, might be, there might be a necessity of like uh, prophylactic aortic surgery. It depends on the severity. So sometimes surgical interventions are really important. So the severity is not same for all the cases. Again, there are different mutations in a population different mutation has different severity and it has to be assessed and understood first before treatment lifestyle modification should be done i mean avoiding strenuous exercise is required in these kind of situations so i hope this video was useful and informative enough if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe get more notes and flashcards in our facebook page and instagram page support our channel using super thanks see you in the next video